punk revolution now today we are going to be doing the top 100 albums of all time this is something i promised i would make once i reached 1000 subscribers and i just did that so here we go i've been working on this list for a long time this video might be kind of long because it's a hundred albums I'm gonna go through and if I spend like about a minute on each album, you can do the math, that's gonna be a long video. So I'll try to be relatively quick, a little nervous about filming this and editing this. This is gonna be a long project for me and I'm afraid I'm gonna film it all and then all of a sudden, freaking the audio is not working or the video didn't look good or something. So let's just get started. We are going to get started with number 100, which is going to be the Ramones self-titled debut album, The Ramones. So this album, it's a cornerstone of punk rock. Of course it's going on this list. And I'm not just putting it on the list because I'm, I'm, this list is not biased towards punk, by the way, but this album actually is, in my opinion, one of the greatest albums of all time. Not only because it's super influential and a cornerstone of punk rock and was pretty groundbreaking when it came out, being so fast and loud and noisy, but because it's so fun to listen to and it's so cool and super, it's awesome. Very influential, great album, I love it. All right, number 99. Number 99 is going to be DJ Shadows Introducing. Whoa, this album, ugh, I've been fucking listening to this album for like over a decade now. I love the shit on this album. It's just, the atmosphere is so beautiful. The, the, there's just so many freaking details in this wonderful album packed with details. A cornerstone of inter instrumental hip hop. Genius, brilliant, amazing, fun, awesome album. It's emotional, it's powerful, it's fun, it's everything. Okay, if you disagree with these already, you are need to get, you need to get your head straight because these are good albums. All right, number 98. 98 is Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill. Okay, this is a classic 90s pop album. You really cannot go wrong with this album. There's, I mean, there's very, there's few pop albums I've heard that have as much personality coming through as much ambition and just coming together in really fucking awesome fun songs that just had a really big impact on music and culture in general and frankly like it's just it's such it's just this album is so freaking 90s i love it all right next album sun city girls torch of the mystics okay so sun city girls have one of the most impressive discographies in rock or in music in general that I have ever seen. It is a massive discography full of brilliance, just absolute genius. Like you can just literally pick any Sun City Girls album at random, there's a ton, and just listen to it and it's just gonna be filled with so much creativity. So it's just, all the songs are just so free, lots of improvisation, just kind of like letting just like your creativity go out there. Sometimes I think they're just like speaking in languages they're just making up, it's literally so like, let the creativity flow and this is the album i think that like i mean i always go back to this one but i mean you can really go pick any sun city girls album and it's gonna be fucking amazing really one of the best bands ever so next one corn's self-titled corn this album is so fucking good it's so heavy the, t the, t the tones of the guitars and the drums just sound fucking amazing and there's just like raw emotion just pouring through yes it's edgy yes it influenced a lot of like you know not so good you know new metal cheesy bands but this album is like literally fucking brilliant like the, the compositions here are genius the guitar tones sound fantastic it's just so, it's just like, it, 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 I feel like there's a lot of new metal that's yet to have been innovated and explored because this album shows that new metal has so much potential to be fucking amazing, but it feels like this is the only album that really excels out of all new metal I've ever listened to, but it's really fucking good. Stunning album. So, moving on. Oh, fuck, I forgot what number we're on. Okay, I figured it out. 95. Prince's album, Sign of the Times, Sign of the Peace, Sign Peace, Sign of Times. So Prince, we all know Prince to be a pop star who's released some really sexy, fun, cool, R&B, funky pop, which is great. But I think in Sign 
piece the times, whatever you want to call the album. This is where Prince really demonstrates he's more than just like a cool, fun, sexy pop artist. He is a, a true musician that takes his craft seriously. Throughout this album, he's just exploring all these different, he's just experimenting throughout this entire album with different sounds and tones and just styles of R&B that's just like sexy, but also a lot of seriousness and political themes in here. Just, it's Prince just taking his art really seriously and it's it's just a lot of brilliance coming through too i think it's fucking wonderful so prince you made it top 100 let's move on to num number 94 let's take a look what's coming next fiona apple when the pawn and then uh, i don't know it's a long title but fiona apple is a brilliant songwriter okay so you put this album on and it's just like you hear it's really just driven by fiona apple and her piano playing but it just creates such a unique, amazing, interesting mindfuck of an album. The atmosphere is brilliant. The songwriting is brilliant. Fiona Apple's voice is full of passion, emotion, beauty. Really fucking stunning album. I love the shit out of this album. Fiona Apple is an extremely talented musician, vocalist, everything. And boy, oh boy, I think this is the album she shines through in the most, in my opinion. Okay, now we're going to move on to number 93. 93, Orange Juice's You Can't Hide Your Love Forever. So, Orange Juice, an 80s British jangle pop band. Lots of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of jangle pop coming out in Britain in the 80s. And I really feel like this is the album that just nailed it better than any other 80s jangle pop release I've ever heard. The guitar work is fucking stunning. The, the, the songs are so weird, but so complex and just really, really fun. The vocals are really weird and strange, but so attractive. And it's just like, it's a lot of fun and it's really cool. But if you like really pay attention, the musicianship here is brilliant. Lots of talent in every single musician in this album. Fucking stunning. Don't let it, don't let it, you know, it might seem poppy and fun at the first glance, but you listen, you just realize it's full of musical brilliance. I think it's very underrated and one of the best albums of all time. Best album, of my opinion, in, it's I actually specifically number 93 best album of all time. Okay, now we're gonna move on to number 92. Number 92 is Scream's self-titled album, Scream, Scream. So Scream, he is really one of the pioneers of the genre of dubstep. True dubstep, real dubstep, not that stupid bro step crap. No, but for real folks, this album really captures something from a whole nother universe. The, it's just so like, kind of like dark and eerie and moody. Like this is like the perfect album to just like put on and like dr take a drive, like just drive through the night. It's just like a lot of weird, cool experimentations going on. It's just like, you can hear the innovation of dubstep kind of coming together with all these cool, fun, interesting experimentations. Scream, in my opinion, is a, br a brilliant musician and it really shines through here. Fucking awesome album, lots of fun. I highly recommend you check this out. It's a blast. Really freaking, you know, British dubstep, I guess you could say. Whatever. Anyways, moving on, number 91. Number 91 is Siege's Drop Dead. So Siege, Siege is one of the most important bands in the genre of pretty much just like extreme punk, you know, freaking like power violence, grindcore, hardcore punk. They were doing this like really aggressive, crazy hardcore shit back in the 80s, like, like one of the first to do it. Not only are they one of like the biggest innovators of these awesome extreme punk genres, but they were also fucking phenomenal at it. Listen to their, just throughout their entire discography, it's like, what the fuck, this is brilliant, this is just so, it's just raw, like, fuck you, I'm a fucking punk, man, it's sick, it's sick, I love it. Number 90, The Van Pelt's Sultans of Sentiment. Wow, this is a brilliant, genius emo album, Midwest emo album, the guitar work, so beautiful. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Just like, just like kind of like picking chords, just creating this really beautiful atmosphere with spoken word, with really strange, bizarre, jarring lyrics, but also just like just something, something about the lyrics just like hit really hard. Like this is like a, this album is all about pure creating a mood, creating an emotion. And I think it just, like it just nails it. Like it's fucking brilliant. I think this is a very underrated album. One of the best emo albums of all time, in my opinion. Happy to put it in this list, it fucking rocks. Go check it out if you like Midwest Emo or anything, or anything, just go check it out, it's so sick. Number 89. 
Death's symbolic. Death is one of the most important bands in the genre of, you guessed it, death metal and this album is really death's masterpiece the compositions here are so fucking sick especially the song symbolic the fucking breakdown where it just kind of like goes to this like slower and it's just i mean okay so this is really like a really brainy album really like thinking about whoa this composition is whoa the way he, whoa the way he did he made this change in the progression and da, 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 da. okay so it's, it's really really just like a big brain thinking about the the, the, just kind of the brilliance that goes into these compositions, okay? I think that's, a, that's something a lot of people don't really realize about metal. It's not about just playing loud as you can, possibly can. There's some really intelligent metal out there, and this is surely one of it. Them, Death's entire discography is honestly pretty fucking stellar. This is my favorite Death album. Really influential, really fucking awesome. Go check it out if you want to get into Death Metal. And if you want, just go, go check it out. And you, just go check it out! Number 88. This is an indie classic. Morphine's good. Holy fuck, Morphine is so fucking sick. First time I listened to him, Morphine wasn't really into it. Felt like so kind of like corny, like blue, like some like weird like bluesy rock band that your dad would listen to. But no, actually, this is like a band that's kind of like doing something that like no other fucking band has really done. The the just the instrumentation being so bass driven and like. The, like the it's just like the atmosphere it creates is so moody but it's also if you really pay attention is like super experimental and like the lyrics are really moody really emotional really moody really really just like it just kind of like stings it's so emotional and it, 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 this is a really like brilliant experimental but emotional album that's just like so like indie and like even the sopranos had morphine and playing in it one of the episodes so that's pretty dope so of course it's going on the list let's move on to the next one number 87 mercury revs your self-esteem. This is one of the best fucking neo psychedelia albums I've ever heard. The freaking guitar solo chasing a pee inside a car. <laughs> That's literally how the song goes. It's brilliant. It's like just super noisy neo psychedelia. The production is just so wonky and weird. It's just like so trippy. It's like literally just like feels like a fucking just like dirty, rough around the edges acid trip. But it's just like feels like you just like go to heaven. And like, these songs are so brilliantly well put together, so psychedelic, so fun, so a lot of emotion coming in this album too. Really jarring, really weird, brilliant, unique, fun, amazing album. Every music lover has got to check this album out because it's fucking sick. Now we're moving on to Crass's The Feeding of 5,000. What the fuck? So the Crass, Crass my ass. Crass is one of the essential, one of the most important punk bands of all time, especially like that anarcho punk coming out of the UK, just super political. Do they owe us a living? Of course they fucking do. It's like, you know, just like, oh my God, these people feel like they're fucking dirty, like living a fucking commune, haven't showered in years, and they're just yelling, you know, playing the drums, playing the guitar. It's fucking awesome. I mean, it's a blast and a punk essential, wonderful, awesome, Politically charged album, very inspirational, really fucking good album. Love Crass, love the influence they've had on music. I love when musicians get real political and just give it in your fucking face. Fuck the system, we're gonna overthrow the system. It's a punk revolution now album. This is, Crass is literally punk revolution now. And now we move on to number 85, The Kinks. The Kinks are the Village Green Preservation Society. What a long album title, I probably said it wrong. Anyways, so this album, I think the Kinks are really kind of freaking underrated in the United States. You're always hearing about, you know, the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, all these great, you know, 60s and 70s bands that are just so wonderful. The Kinks, are you kidding me? They fucking are, they rock, okay? They, not only were they, play, you know, they, 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 they had like, they dipped their, dipped their toes in like proto-punk and some more like psychedelic kind of pop and shit. They, they just were like popping out so much fucking, so many fucking wonderful pop albums. And this one is just like, holy fuck. Okay, this is like so, this is like, the melodies here. The melodies here are the best fucking melodies ever. The melodies in this album are literally fucking brilliant. The Kings are fucking brilliant, and the melodies in this fucking album are fucking brilliant. So we're gonna move on now to number 84. Spiritualized albums. 84 is spiritualized. Ladies and gentlemen, we are floating in space. 
Spiritual eyes are brilliant. Okay, this album is really brilliant, honestly. So I just love like space rock, psychedelic rock, all that shit. And this album is so fucking ambitious. It's, it's just, it's long and packed. Every single song is just packed with like these crazy, like jazzy, like just explosions of like synths. It's just like, what the fuck is going on? It's a mindfuck of an album. And like throughout this like weird, crazy, spacey, synthy experimentations, there was like a ton of emotion, like really heartbreaking emotion. Like literally song is about heartbreak. It's heavy. Emotionally, it's really powerful. Musically, it's really ambitious. It's a fucking stunning album. Certainly going on the list. Let us move on. Number 83 is Bark Psychosis's Hex. This album is fucking stunning. Post-rock, jazzy post-rock. Post-rock taking influence from jazz, some polyrhythms in this album, lots and lots of textures that come together that like, honestly, like, this is one of those albums that when I listen to, I'm just like, how the fuck did anyone compose an album this complex, this brilliant? There's just so many wonderful textures that just, you know, crescendo and just like so delicately weave together to create really powerful, emotional, innovative, brilliant songs. Certainly going on the top 100, folks. This album is fucking nuts. It's so good. Number 82 is Alice Coltrane's Journey in Sachadananda. I hope I said that right. Featuring Pharaoh Sanders. Okay, so we have some brilliant jazz minds coming together in one album, creating probably one of the most beautiful albums I've ever heard. Okay, so you got this like wonderful atmosphere that's just like, it's, you know, it's avant-garde jazz. Just like all these really wonderful, cool textures coming at you, including Alice Coltrane's harp work with, you know, freaking, freaking, you're putting a harp, you're putting a harp in jazz. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And you're just combining it with the kind of like spiritual, strange, crazy, fun, Pharaoh Sanders type jazz. Like, it's just like, it's, it literally is just like, like brilliant, like bringing the best fucking things you can possibly put together in one jazz album, making one of the best jazz albums I've ever heard. Brilliant, beautiful album. Go check it out. It's gorgeous. Moving on now. Number 81 is Stevie Wonder's Songs in the Key of Life. So, Stevie Wonder is, okay, this album is just, okay, it's a, it's a long album. I think it's like 100 minutes long. It's really fucking long, but what's so jaw-dropping about it is like, there's not a minute wasted. Every fucking minute is just a brilliant, wonderful, really well thought out composition. Like, Stevie Wonder demonstrates in this album he is clearly one of the most talented musicians of all time. Wonderful voice, wonderful instrumentation going on, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of details, tons of details, a very varied album, very diverse, lots of different genres and moods and emotions in this album. And there's also a lot of really catchy fun stuff too. It's literally jaw-droppingly good. Stevie Wonder is literally a jaw-droppingly brilliant musician. It's going on the fucking list. I love this album. Number 80 is Brian Eno's Here Comes the Warm Jets. This album, holy fuck. I recommend you take a little <sighs> take a little hit of pocket and listen to Brian Eno's Here Comes the Warm Jets because the, the guitar tones are just so brilliant and wacky and the freaking Brian Eno singing is just like, it's just so like, mm, it's just like, Ah, it's like it's like it's like ecstasy. This album is like fucking ecstasy. It's brilliant, so fun. Love the tones in this album. Love the strange just arrangements that come together in like a really noisy but fun. It's like it's like it's like proto noise pop or something. It's fucking sick. Number seventy nine is Bob Dylan's Blonde on Blonde. Okay, so Bob Dylan, brilliant musician. Like I just like there's like a lot of Bob Dylan. I was like, oh my god, I want to fucking just like. It's just like, I love all his fucking albums. He's so, it's just, he's essential. He's essential for a reason, folks. His voice is fucking funny. His lyrics are fucking funny. His, 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 his he's playing a freaking acoustic guitar funny. No, but for real, folks, th th this is a very ambitious album. Yeah, I think it really is Bob Dylan at his best. Um, just really, really pushing himself to the limits with these really complex, detailed, fun, brilliant, songs, these expanded songs, these songs are pretty long too. He's just going all out showing off that he is a brilliant musician, not holding anything back. It's fucking sick. So number 78 is Animal Collective's Meriwether Post Pavilion. This album is absolutely stunning. Every time I listen to it, and I've listened to it a lot, every time I listen to it, I pick something else up. There is so much going on. So many layers of sounds and textures. It's like 
insane. Like literally the first time I listened to it, I was like 13 years old or something. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. I have no fucking clue what's going on. I can't listen to it, it's too complicated. You know, obviously now I listen to it and I hear it's a very fun, pretty accessible pop album. But really folks, like it's just, the way this album brings together the best of both worlds, the experimentation with the uh, uh, melodic, really melodic, really fun, you know, Beach Boys inspired, you know, vocals coming together. It's just like, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. It's a challenging, fun, accessible. It's like everything, it's everything an album should be. And everything, it's everything a pop album should be. It's fucking fantastic. It's amazing. Number 77 is Meshuggah's Chaos Sphere. So Meshuggah, one of the most talented bands of all time, okay? Like, the, the, it just, like, the, the, the rhythms are fucking insane. Like, normally, like, I, I feel like the vast majority of songs I listen to, I'm able to kind of sit down and, you know, sing along to or play my guitar to, figure out what the riff is and just play along. Like, Meshuggah is one of those bands where, like, they're just doing shit that's, like, so out of this fucking world that, like, I cannot fucking follow. Like, this is just, like, is this, like, song all just one giant fucking polyrhythm in the, key, the fucking time signature of, like... 27.3 or something fucking crazy. It's just like, it's absolutely brilliant. It's otherworldly, avant-garde, just so challenging. It, it just, they're masters at rhythm. They're masters at just heaviness and just like the fucking guitar solo. It's fucking awesome. It's fucking awesome. Meshuggah's fucking awesome. I didn't know which one. I, like, it was hard for me to pick which Meshuggah album to put on this list, but I think Chaos Fear is really where they nailed just creating this really bizarre universe of Meshuggah. Number 76 is Minor Threat's Complete Discography, <sighs> which is an album, so I can do it. But anyways, um, it's a compilation album with all their all the arcades it counts. So, Minor Threat, <sighs> honestly, like, come on. One of the most influential hardcore punk bands of all time. This album is so fucking just like the definition of like Washington, D.C., hardcore punk, ripping it up, chugging away on your power cords, yelling because everyone around you is fucking idiots. <sighs> really insul- Okay, honestly, though, this, this album fucking rocks. Like, just sheer aggression, emotion, angst. Lovely stuff. Amazing. Really amazing. Really amazing album. Is there anything else? Like it's amazing. Number 75 is Holes Live Through This. So, Hole... <sighs> honestly, this is one of the best grunge albums of all time. This is fucking brilliant. I, th I think it's so weird that everyone's like, you know, like, Nirvana, 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 you know, Nirvana smells like Teen Spirit, blah, 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 blah. Okay, Nirvana's fun and cool and all, but like, this shit, like, it's just like so much better, in my opinion. Like, it's like, in terms of the songwriting, I'd say it's on par with Nirvana's Nevermind, but like, lyrically, I just feel like I'm getting way more content from the lyrics in this album. Like, I, like you know, Kurt Cobain's lyrics are just so like, you know, like, he is dumb and I don't really know. It's like just like super vague and childish, but freaking whole is just like really delivering some actually thought provoking, emotional, honest lyrics to go along with the, the energetic, fun, powerful, awesome grunge. It's a really fucking stellar album. Really underrated in my opinion. Fucking sick album. Hell yeah. Number 74 is Have a Nice Life's Death Consciousness. Okay, this album is so fucking sick. It's just like, it's like putting together like this like just like gloomy, dark, heavy, kind of shoegaze post-punk with like, you know, of course, like all sorts of, sometimes it kind of feels like the atmosphere is like so dark, it almost feels like black metal at times, but it's not really black metal, even though there's a song that has black metal in the title. I don't really fucking know that. that I'm it's just, <sighs> this is such an ambitious, amazing, wonderful album. I mean, come on. The last song on this is just like the noise, just like, da 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 it's gonna make you cry because it's so brilliant. This is like my favorite album in high school pretty much. It's just like, I love this album. So it's pretty brilliant and it's just like super lo-fi and cool. It's just kind of like a super inspirational as someone's able to create such an ambitious and innovative and fun and amazing and beautiful and emotional album on such a low budget. It's really inspirational for all do-it-yourself musicians out there. Fantastic album, one of the best of all time. And number 73 is Boris's Flood. Boris. Okay, so Boris a fantastic discography all around, but I think here they set out on a mission to create such a fucking piece of art. Boris's Flood is a work of art, okay? I almost don't even want to tell you too much about it because I don't want to give you the spoilers because it really is like, it's like a work of art that like has like some shit in it that like I don't want to tell you. It's just like, 
It's a work of art. It's a, it's a fucking work of art. It sounds like a flood. I'll tell you that much. And it's just so ambitious and it just is executed so fucking well. I've never really heard a concept album executed as well as this one, frankly, folks. Number 72 is Boards of Canada's Music Has the Right to Children. This is an album I can revisit nonstop, all the time, never ever get tired of it because it is just packed, jam-packed with details and textures. Always something interesting to listen to. This is a brilliant album. Takes you to a whole nother universe, okay? Really just like, ah. And you know, like, I, I also have to give a shout out to Boards of Canada's uh, Geo Gotti or Got, Geo, or is it Geo Daddy? Geo Gotti, whatever. This Boards of Canada's music has the right to children. Go check it out. It's a mind fucking trippy album, yo. Number 71 is Luz Rallye's de Nudes. I don't really know how to speak French, but have you heard nothing in the family? This album here. So fucking sick. It's amazing to me that there are musicians doing this shit back in the fucking 70s, okay? It's just basically just one heavy, slow bass line just chugging away, and then the guitar. Just an explosion of noise and feedback, like, ah! And then the vocals. It's just like so fucking trippy and noisy and cool. It's like the, it's like one of the coolest fucking albums of all time. Look at the fucking album cover. That reeks of coolness. And it's so, it's just brilliant. I mean, it's obviously inspired by the Velvet Underground and maybe like the Stooges as well. But just take it, that formula, and just step it up to the next 1,000th level. It's brilliant. It's fun. It's cool. It's awesome. It's catchy. It's brilliant. Number 70 is Fela Kuti's expensive shit. So Fela Kuti, okay, brilliant, absolutely brilliant musician, really big discography, full of wonderful, every fucking album I've listened to, just to pick one, it's just like, holy shit, this is brilliant. It's like, it's Afrobeat, very rhythmic, very jazzy, lots of fun. This is like, you just wanna like, put this on and just fucking like, kinda just like, dance in your room because it's just like, so fucking like, fun and just like, it's like blissful. It just makes you wanna fucking like, take your clothes off, run in the street, go down to the fucking Washington DC and demand justice, okay? Really brilliant stuff. So, Fela Kuti not only is a, a brilliant musician, not only creating music that's really fun and like lots of wonderful textures, but he's also a very political artist as well, putting a lot of politics in his music. Go, go read about Fela Kuti. He's a brilliant mind in music. Number 69 is Husker Du's Zen Arcade. This is a stunning album. I think it was like a double album, a triple album. I don't know. It's a, it's a long album packed with just punk brilliance. These songs, every single song is just a blast, okay? Not only are these songs just like really fun to like, you know, listen to, but the instrumentation, every band member is just giving their 110,000% fantastic playing, full of energy, nonstop for this whole album. And there's a plenty of really cool, interesting, fun, bizarre experimentations too. So it's not like you're just kind of listening for, you know, an hour of just like, you know, punk, just nah, nah, nah. No, it's like an hour of like experimenting with all, in all sorts of different really cool ways of how can we just take punk to the next level. It's a, it's, I mean, every, every punker, every punk rocker will tell you this album is just like packed with so much brilliance. Wonderful album to re-listen to because it's so long and there's just so much cool stuff you can pick up on every single listen. Number 68 is Kate Bush's Hounds of Love. Okay, Kate Bush, brilliant musician, and I just, this album here, Hounds of Love, like, stunning. Like, it, it, from like start to finish, it just feels like one cohesive, brilliant work of art. The production is so strange, but it's so compelling and kind of beautiful, kind of, kind of jarring. Really, just Kate Bush, just her vocals too. You know, Kate Bush just really, just it, she just it's just they're so expressive and just kind of like just like it's like liberating like it's just, it's just like you feel like you're like free she's like an artist who's just free to do whatever she wants and she's just putting her all this creativity and ambition in one album and it's executed so well one of the best albums of all fucking time kate bush has a wonderful discography go listen to her whole discography honestly number 67 sunny day real estate's diary wow I mean, come on, I'm a punk rocker. I play post-hardcore, you know I'm gonna love this album. The, this album is just so fucking like 90s 
post hardcore emo. Obviously, you can like just super influential in follow, you know, following emo and post hardcore, and for a good reason. The compositions here, nothing really too crazy complex in this album. There is a decent amount of experimentation, but it's just, it's just, it's just like, it's just so like angsty 90s teen with the guitar shouting and just letting it all go it's just brilliant I, it just it just kind of stings this stings because it just feels so raw it's just such a raw visceral beautiful amazing punk album number 66 is dna's dna on dna this album packed with brilliance. Lots of just genius musicianship going on. Extremely inspirational because it's very clear that none of the musicians in this band know how to play their fucking instruments, okay? And they're just diddling around, but they're just so creative and just so ambitious with their strange ding, do, ding, do, ding, do, like noisy, jarring, strange music. It's very inspirational. It really makes anyone realize, hey, I don't need to be good at playing my instruments. I can fucking make some sick music. And that's kind of the whole genius of no wave and punk in general, if I'm being entirely honest. And it shines brightly in DNA's discography. Number 65 is Black Flag's My War. This album, really important. Really important punk album. Not only for punk, but also for sludge too. Sludge metal, this album really kind of, you know, bridges the gap between punk and sludge metal, which of course have always had a really interesting, cool, fun relationship. Lots of, pl plenty of albums have been inspired by this album. And not only is it super inspirational, but it's really fucking good. I think this is really, I mean, obviously Damage is wonderful, but I think this is really where like Black Flag kind of just like struck gold and like did something kind of like really groundbreaking here, if I'm being entirely honest. And the album cover is really dope too. Number 64 is Bad Brains, Bad Brains. Okay, this is one of the best punk albums of all time. That's. I mean, I, I already reviewed it. You can go check out that review, but it's, it's just so fucking good. Like, if you don't like hardcore punk, if you don't like punk, listen to this and you will because it's that good. It's just so fast, so fun, so much energy, so unique, so innovative, so brilliant, so inspirational. It's a blast, okay? It's a fuck. It's like, it's, it's like, it's like everything hardcore punk should be. Number 63 is Jesus Lizard's Goat. So Jesus Lizard is surely one of the best noise rock albums of all time. The guitar work here is phenomenal. The drums are phenomenal. The bass playing is phenomenal and the vocals are fucking phenomenal. Every single band member in this band is just contributing so much like just wonderful things. You can just listen to this album, or just listen to one instrument and just focus on it and you'll be like, whoa, that's so much cool shit going on. And you can re-listen to it and then listen to another instrument and be like, holy fuck. It's just, it's just like every single band member just comes together. The chemistry is delicious. It's insane. It's, it's crazy. It's nuts. This album is fucking nuts. But it's also brilliant. It shows you the comp. This is what you, this is what happens when you combine insanity and craziness with brilliance and geniusness. You get Jesus Lizard's Goat. Number 62 is Caretakers and Empty it Bliss Beyond This World. This album, every time I listen to it, I'm pretty stunned. Okay, very simple. Nothing too crazy going on here. Very, really honestly, folks. But sometimes you don't need to do anything too complicated to make music that's just so jaw-droppingly -dro emotional, heavy. This album, to me, when I listen to it, it kind of makes me think about, like, where are we? What? What? Where are we on the universe? Why are we on the universe? Like, what? What? what what's? The, what's the meaning of our existence? Why do we exist? Is there a god? Is there a beginning of time, or is there an end of time, or is it just an existent? This is a very existential album, in my opinion. Very emotional, very heavy album, and it conveys all these really heavy, emotional, dark, existential emotions, without using any lyrics. It's just. It's really simple. It's just. It's really that powerful. It's really powerful music. Number 61 is King Crimson's In the Court of the Crimson King. Very influential album, one of the, the most important progressive rock albums ever released. One of the most important classic rock albums. It's just like, okay, this is like... <sighs> one of the first progressive rock albums ever made, one of the best progressive out rock albums ever made, and it's the beginning of a fucking amazing discography by Crim King, Crim 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 King Crimson. And it's so much fun, and it's so fun, and so epic, and so cool. It's a, it, this is a really cool, funny, cool, fun, awesome album. Okay, folks, you probably already listened to it. I don't need to talk about it anymore. Number 60 is Talking Heads Remain in Light. This album is 
let's be honest, folks, it's a mind fuck, okay? Tons of just like, just funky rhythms, just like, and textures kind of like bouncing at you into, whoa, 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 and you're listening and it's like, whoa, there's so much shit going on, but it's like so fun, you just want to dance to it, and it's just like, it's just like, oh, it's like, how can New Wave be so complex and fun and cool, and it's kind of punk too, and it's just like, it's just like, it feels like an alien made this album, because it's just so like, what is going on here, folks? What is this shit? Talking Heads is brilliant, okay, obviously. And this is really, I mean, like, I love Talking Heads, but this is, I think this is really the album. Like, at the end of the day, this is the album that really is their artistic masterpiece, in my opinion. I also love 77, but this is, this is the one that's going on the list of top 100. Number 59 is Throbbing Gristles, The Second Annual Report. This album scared the shit out of me the first time I listened to it, and it kept me coming back. That's how fucking good it is. It's just like, it's just so dark, so kind of disgusting. Like, it's just like this feel, like listening to this album can be as scary as watching a horror film, but it's not like this album is like trying to like, boom, like scare you like that or anything. It's not, or like putting like sounds of like fucking like, you know, someone being cut up with a chainsaw. No, 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 it's just like so eerie, the strange, disgusting noises they use. It's just like industrial being innovated, coming together, very innovative, influential, brilliant album by one of the most influential industrial acts of all time. And go check it out, it's fucking sick. Number 58 is Avi Terre and Panda Bear's Spirit They're Gone, Spirit They Vanished. What the fuck? They were so young when they wrote and recorded this album. It's kind of, it's kind of like, it's just like, I don't think I'll ever write an album this good and it's just like so fucking, it's just like, it's, like, it's just like, it's just like brilliant. It's just like, let's just like make these really sweet, juicy, yummy pop songs, but like, let's just make them really complex compositions so they're like 10 minutes long. And then now you got this like really awesome, amazing, like progressive pop thing going on here that's really lo-fi with really strange, unique instrumentation and really strange atmosphere that's so dark and gloomy and emotional and poppy and fun at the same time. And then we're just gonna put harsh noise on top of it so you can't even listen to it. It's like, no, I haven't heard any other band do anything like this before. It's fucking brilliant. It's genius. Number 57 is Beach Boys Pet Sounds. Okay, this album is kind of fucking dope. I just like, I mean, this is an album you can always go back to throughout your whole life because these songs are just so stellar. The instrumentation. <gasps> the compositions, it's just like, it's just like, just, just textures on textures of just like, do do just like weird fucking crazy noises and emotions coming at you and then just singing about love and heartbreak and just like <laughs> and they did this in the 60s it's just like one of the best albums of all time everyone come on this is if you don't like this album i recommend you call me call me and i'll talk to you about it why you should like it because it's really good it's fun and it's brilliant it's not often you get both of those and it's inspirational too Number 56 is Neil Young's After the Gold Rush. This is a beautiful album. This is just so fucking beautiful. That's really, if I had to describe this song with one word, you guessed it, it'd be beautiful. Because like, you got these like, this like wonderful, just gentle, you know, guitar playing, just kind of just like, just like, just, just, you're just sitting there in this like beautiful guitar playing. And then there's like the gorgeous Neil Young vocals just kind of like sways on top of the whole thing. It feels like a fucking lullaby. But then of course it's just, it just has like so much passion and emotion that explodes. Just stunningly brilliant, wonderful work of art. Neil Young's After the Gold Rush, my favorite Neil Young album. So beautiful. Number 55 is Cocktail Twins Treasure. Cocktail Twins. They're f they fucking rock, okay? Like, this is like, the, like Dream Pop really doesn't get any better than this. Like, the, the dark, gloomy instrumentation contrasted with the beautiful vocals that are also so abstract, of course, the, the lyrics that don't make any sense. It's just it's like, what the fuck is going on here? It's like, it's like, it's just like so like, it's pretty avant-garde, honestly. But then it's also like a lot of fun. It's like the, the, the songs are like super melodic, very poppy and catchy. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get the experimentation and the darkness and the gloominess and, but then you also get like really beautiful vocals and it's just like, it doesn't get better than this, folks. Number 54 is Polvo's Celebrate the New Dark Age. Polvo, one of my favorite bands, brilliant discography, but I'd say in this EP is where they kind of nailed it. Every single song in this EP is so fucking awesome. It's just like brilliant 
indie rock noise pop guitars going nuts on this thing. I mean, Povols always has insane, brilliant guitar work, really dissonant all over the guitar, like just like brilliance. But I'd say here in this EP is where they, 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 they get that awesome, fun, crazy, cool guitar work and instrumentation that they, they're known for, the math rock shit. And then they just kind of like put really sweet melodies in it to make a really brilliant, fun, catchy pop album too. It's noise pop. It's noise pop, math rock, indie rock brilliance. It doesn't get better. Number three is 53. Number 53 is Orchids, Chaos is Me. This is a brilliant screamo album. I mean, come on, like just so much dissonance and chaos and beauty and emotion. Very emotional album. Let me show you something real quick. Look at this hoodie I own. I even have the fucking album cover on the back of my hoodie. That's how you know I like it a lot. And I also put it on my list so that obviously you know I like it a lot. But it really is brilliant, very influential, really amazing album, really deserves it. <sighs> Number 52 is Glenn Bronco's Ascension. <laughs> what the fuck is this album? It's just like, it's just you take, I'd say this is like kind of post-rock, kind of classical music, but making these genres with no wave, just really noisy, abrasive guitar, lots of guitars playing on top of each other, just like, just waves of just like noisy, 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 noise rock. Like, you know, of course, like the, you know, kind of like early Sonic Youth noisy shit. And then just making these really epic compositions that kind of climax and just go into these beautiful moments. It's just really unique, really innovative, way ahead of its time. Just like every noise rock, no wave kids, wet dream come true. Brilliant, fantastic, wonderful stuff. Go check it out. Number 51 is Triple Six Mafia's Underground Volume 1. Triple Six Mafia, one of the best hip hop groups of all time. Okay, the, 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 the like kind of like lo fi, spooky, creepy beats combined with like the hazy, you know, drug lyrics. <sighs> Honestly, like, I, I, I'm gonna be real with you folks, like, this album is so fucking good. I go back to this album a lot. It's an album that's, like, just packed with really awesome, fun, cool songs. Really, really fun. Lots of personality from all the rappers. Creates its own universe. Super innovative. I feel like so many rappers nowadays just, like, try to, like, do this, like, kind of, like, lo-fi, cool, hazy thing. It's just, like, okay, that's cool, but, like, come on. Triple Six Mafia did it, like, better than anyone else. Don't even fucking try. Number 50 is Flipper's album. Album Generic, was it Album Generic Flipper? Yes, Album Generic Flipper. So this album is, I mean, you put it on, it's just like these guys, it sounds like these guys don't know how to play their instruments. It just sounds like they're just like, they don't give a fuck. It's just like, it's really, this is what punk is about. It's just like really abrasive, really just like sloppy playing. It just sounds like, like if you were to like dance to this album and be like, you know what I mean? It's just like fucking stupid, pure stupidity, but it's so, Catharsis, cathartic, what is it, what's the word, catharsis? It feels like catharsis, it's just letting all the stupidity out, letting it go, let just be dumb, be fun, and then there's like some weird, like just, just it's just like, just like, it's just like, it's just like so, it's like, it's like simultaneously very ambitious while also being the least ambitious album I've ever heard at the same time, it's, it's kind of a mind fuck that way. We are getting there, we are now a little, we're just, we just passed a halfway point, so now we're gonna be at number 49, which is Sleater Kinney's the Woods. This is a freaking fantastic rock album. It's literally just like the guitars are just massive. This all these songs are just huge, epic, big, loud rock songs, indie rock, lots of you know, just like experimenting with different sort of like indie rock types of sounds and songs. Very diverse album in terms of the musical styles they play in um but all at the end of the day it's just like it's just a really fucking good rock album no matter no matter how you try to look at it and um i mean yeah it's just it's pretty darn impressive how how uh well written all these songs are and how fucking fun and awesome and beautiful this album is moving on to number 48. number 48 is little b's god's father so little b's entire discography is really an amazing achievement and just in general, like just a ton, tons and tons and tons of mixtapes and songs released all for free, doing something I would say kind of like avant-garde, like just the stream of consciousness rapping, just letting his stupid, silly, funny personality shine through um, with a lot of humor in there too and all sorts of just 
creativity coming out. Um, it's kind of brilliant. It's like, what the fuck is this? It's genius. And I feel like God's Father is really his grand achievement of being able to just show off. He's capable of not only being funny and cool and creative, but also he's got, like, he, when, he want, when he wants to be, he can be a fantastic rapper, give some hard-hitting lyrics, too, that are thought-provoking and emotional. Just brilliant stuff. Brilliant musician and a brilliant artist. Little fucking B. Let's move on to number 48. I actually meant to say number 47. We're now at number 47. That's going to be Cans Tago Mago, Tago Mago, whatever you want to call it. This is like one of the best progressive rock albums fucking ever. This is so dope. The way the band just jams and there's just so much weird energy just kind of building up and it's just like, it just kind of like explodes and the rhythm is just like. Like the drums are fucking amazing. The guitar work is amazing. The the way this whole album just sounds is sick. The jams, they kind of go on these noisy, crazy, weird jams. It's like fucking psychedelic progressive rock heaven. It like really, like progressive rock really doesn't get any better. than This is like a fucking amazing album by an amazing band. Can has a lot of really good albums. This is my personal favorite though. Really fucking good. Moving on to number 46. Number 46 is, of course, it's going to be Mad Villains, Mad Villainy, what the fuck? MF Doom is an amazing rapper, and it just, like, the beats here are fucking sick. You just kind of, like, it's kind of like just get the perfect hip-hop album, honestly. Everything just sounds so fucking awesome. You just, like, you could just tune into the beats and let this, the crazy, weird, kind of cartoonish, jazzy atmosphere take you away while MF Doom is delivering some really creative, fun, enjoyable lyrics and it's just like the entire it's like it's just like non-stop fucking awesomeness for sure one of the best hip-hop albums of all time of course it's going on the fucking list it's so unique so well executed so brilliant pretty much fa like fantastic in every single aspect number 45 is slayer's reign in blood this is fucking sick this is one of the best thrash metal albums of all time if not the best. Slayer is so fucking awesome. Just what, what takes this album to the next level, not only because it's fast and fun, but geez, Slayer, Slayer's sense of rhythm, really driven a lot by the drumming. The drumming on this album is absolutely fantastic. Just the way they're able to just kind of be like, and then they're just kind of switched up to like, you know, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like another riff and like a completely different rhythm, like, the way they're able to like jump between all these sections with different rhythms. The drumming is so creative. It's brilliant. Some of the best drumming I've ever heard in my life in this album, if not the best drumming ever in this album. It's so influential, so fucking awesome, so fucking awesome, so fucking awesome. Like, if, if you're a band and you take Slayer as an inspiration, you should do that, by the way, because they're awesome. Your music's going to be way better because of how masterful they are over using rhythm to make their fucking music really fucking awesome, better than ever. Does that make sense? I don't know. Let's move on. Number 45, is it? No, number 44. I just keep losing track. I don't, this is not the best organized. Whatever. Number 44 is Nick Drake's Pink Moon. This is a stunning album. So intimate, so beautiful, so just like the vocal delivery is just so heavy and hard hitting. It's just like, it's it's a gorgeous album. The guitar work is absolutely fucking stunning. It's really amazing how Nick Drake was able to make such a powerful, beautiful, heavy, just like complex. It's simple and complex. It's, it's so complex, but it's just using vocals and an acoustic guitar. That's all you need. The guitar work here is stunning. The vocal delivery is stunning. The lyrics are stunning. It's just like... It's like fucking just, it nails it. It's like just, it nails what a fucking intimate album should really be about. Number 43 is Danny Brown's XXX. This is an album that stuns me every time I return to it. Like, it's just, it's just brilliant from every single fucking angle. The beats, the choices, the, the, the beats that Danny Brown chooses to use here are just so fucking cool. Like, they're like post punk experimental rock beats, but like somehow Danny Brown brings his like, you know, really, mm, you know, inappropriate but funny attitude and just like. Just, just gives a fantastic rap delivery over them, while also, on top of being kind of funny and creative and clever with his lyrics, also has a very serious side to him that comes out in this album. It's really just kind of like, 
a, a master a masterpiece it's just in so many different ways the experimental beats with the the brilliant rapping lyrics it's so fucking sick i love the shit out of this album one of the best rap albums in, of all time in my opinion moving on number 42 is sun ross Lanquidity. if you have not listened to this album i highly recommend you do because if you're into jazz you gotta fucking listen to this album this album feels like it just transports you into another universe it's like really trippy it's like it's like super trippy jazz feels like you're floating through space and like everything's like whoa, whoa, whoa. it's i mean sun ross entire discography is so fucking cool the way they experiment with all these different sounds in jazz but i think Lanquidity, out of all the sun Ra i've listened to it's just like a whole nother fucking level one of the best albums i've ever heard in my life just stunning shockingly good just so fucking weird but so delicious and so brilliant. Number 41 is Unwound's New Plastic Ideas. This album is so, this album kind of feels like, imagine you get, you woke up and you only got five and a half hours of sleep and you just kind of have to like, just kind of like drudge through the day and you're exhausted and you're just like depressed and hate everything and the whole world around you just like feels like nothingness. It just like feels like you're like like walking through molasses and you're miserable. To me, this album sounds kind of like that. Okay, it's just so like it's just so almost like nihilistic, but like also like this like it has like kind of like this like be, like really stunning energy behind it, driving the whole album. Of course, combined with amazing musicianship, the guitar work and riffs here are fantastic. The drumming is fantastic. The bass lines are so fucking awesome, and it, it's just like the chemistry between the three musicians is just brilliant. And it comes, it's just like it's just like it just it 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 just nails like a really certain emotion that I just I, like just like a like a dead, depressed emotion so fucking well. It's a brilliant album. One more quick note about that. This album was produced by Steve Fisk, who also produced Died's new album. So if you like Unwound, you might like Died's new album because it's produced by the same person. Okay, whatever, enough, enough about me. Let's move on to number 40. Number 40 is Leatherface's, Leather, Leatherface's Mush. Mush is one of the, oh, this album is so fucking sick. The, it's just, it's, it's just, it's just really awesome. Punk. It's just really awesome punk with really catchy melodies, really, really awesome just energy and playing, fantastic melodies. It's just like I love the vocals, I love the vocal sound. I love the songwriting. They use like interesting chords and, and rhythms and stuff. It's just like it's just really, really, really fucking tight melodic punk that I've been going back to this album for years and I still love it every time I listen to it. It's, it blows me away how good this album is. One of the best punk albums ever, Leatherface. Go check them out. Let's move on to number 39. Number 39 is Morbid Angel's Altars of Madness. So, Morbid Angel, extremely important band in the genre of death metal. Altars of Madness, one of the most important death metal, most influential death metal albums ever released. Super, it's like, you know, it's like one of the, it's pretty, this is a pretty early death metal band. Um, and it fucking rips. It's just so like, it's just so fun. Like, if you don't like death metal, give this one a try. It's so fucking fun. You just like grooving along with it. The rhythms are so sick. The way they kind of like stop and then start playing again. It's just like, da -da 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 -da. it's just a blast, okay? There's really no other way to put it besides it's, it's a blast. It's like evil, you know, brutal death metal. But it's like so fucking fun, it almost feels like you're just like, like, I don't know, it just feels like you're, like, it's like a dance, it feels like EDM, it's like death metal, but like EDM, I don't, I don't fucking know, folks. It's brilliant, there's a reason why it was so inspirational. Number 38 is Jeff Mills Live at the Liquid Room Tokyo. So Jeff Mills, if you're not familiar, one of the most influential DJs of all time from Detroit, had a big, played a big role in the Detroit techno scene, really the birthplace of techno. And I mean, he's got some really fantastic music, but this album will make you shit your pants. It is so fucking good. If you ever wonder, how do genres get, you know, how did genres become a thing? How does like one music scene in Detroit kind of like change the music of the entire world forever? Listen to this album and you'll understand. If you were someone in Detroit and you went to a concert and heard music this fucking good, you're gonna be like, hold the fuck up. This is fucking amazing. I need to be a DJ too. Boom, and now you got a whole new genre. Thank you, Jeff Mills, for your brilliance. Number 37 is Death Grips X Military. Death Grips, they fucking just, if you were a teenager growing up during the 2010s following Death Grips' musical career, 
it was just like a fucking blast because their music is so fucking amazing. This band was always up to some weird, funny, crazy shit. And it's just like music like you've never fucking heard before. It's so like, it's so aggressive and edgy, rough around the edges, but just filled with musical brilliance, strange samples, interesting lyrics, really powerful vocal delivery, awesome drumming by Zach Hill. It's just like, what the, this is like a fucking amazing music project. Ex-Military, their first mixtape kick, to kick the project off. Something about it just has this raw energy, like it hurts your ears to me that is like, it's just so brilliant. I, I absolutely do love Death Grips. I love this release. It's fucking awesome. One of the best of all time. Number 36 is Alice in Chains, Dirt. So grunge, 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 grunge. <sighs> Alice in Chains, his album Dirt is the best grunge album, period. Do not let anyone else tell you otherwise. Grunge is actually a really fucking cool music scene. I feel like because of how cheesy a lot of post-grunge is and how poppy some of the more mainstream grunge is, a lot of people kind of just write grunge off as a stupid genre. But no, grunge fucking kicked ass. Really, it really did. And if you don't believe me, listen to Alice in Chains' Dirt the raw emotion coming through. You can literally hear the suffering in the vocals, the drug addiction issues that are in the lyrics. It's pretty heartbreaking, but it comes together in a really fun, brilliant, unique, amazing rock album. This album fucking rocks. Do not sleep on Alice in Chains, okay? And do not write them off. They're fucking awesome. Number 35 is Patti Smith's Horses. Patti Smith, an incredibly important figure in punk. And this album, if you don't know why, you listen to this album, you'll, you'll just hear, okay, this is brilliant. Like, what is Patti Smith doing here? The vocal delivery is just so free and full of life and energy and just the lyrics are so like, what the fuck am I listening to? The compositions here, the, 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 the just like kind of like, these the, the way these songs are structured and stuff is just so out there. It's just so, crea it's just packed with so much creativity, so ahead of its time, so much fun, so brilliant, so inspirational. If you want some inspiration and you've never listened to this album, listen to this album and it's gonna make you wanna pick up your guitar and write a really brilliant punk album because it fucking rocks. Number 34 is Thinking Feller's Union, Local 282's EP, Admonishing the Bishops. Thinking Feller's, what a fucking band. The way they, I mean, the, the way they just were just so determined to just go further and further into the, the more just dissonant, strange, weird, noisy chords and rhythms and just, just like, just like, like just, just, it's just, it's just, it's so appealing. It's just so interesting to listen to this, this band, like the mindset they must be in when they're writing these songs. It's just so noisy, so quirky, so fun, so brilliant, so genius. And this EP is Thinking Fellers at their most consistent. It's a, it's an EP, so it's not as many songs as like one of their full length albums. But they just they just kind of show everything that's so brilliant and so amazing and so fun about Thinking Fellers in one EP. And for that, it's my favorite Thinking Fellers release, and in my opinion, one of the best albums of all time. Thinking Fellers is a fucking amazing band. Number thirty three is Asuk's Anti Capital. So Asuk, I think they're from Michigan. Maybe not. I don't know. I'll, uh, whatever. <laughs> Google it. Um, one of the most important grind core bands of all time, and if you listen to this release, you will understand why. Very influential album. These guys are fucking legends. Grindcore really doesn't get any better than this. Their playing is just so stunning. Their sound is just so aggressive, but it's just so like, it's just so revolutionary. This is revolutionary grindcore. You could probably guess from the fucking title of the album. Um, and it's kind of unmatched. And the fact that this is a band of only three people playing, is just like jaw dropping. It's like, these guys are so fucking talented. Like it really demonstrates to you, grindcore is not just about playing loud and fast and just sounding like stupid idiots. No, grindcore can be full of really technical, brilliance in the musicianship and this is this is it folks listen to asuk number 32 is television's marky moon another fucking amazing record not only for the influence it had in punk and post-punk etc and just like new york punk music in general but also because the guitar work is so fucking sick the guitar work here is just absolutely brilliant kind of like really unprecedented just really angular bizarre riffs that are just just like kind of like all over the place that just like I mean like this shit's got to have inspired 
so many guitarists, including myself. One of the best things I've ever done as a guitarist is pick up my guitar and just put the songs in slow motion and just steal the riffs from this song and use them to practice because it opens your brain up to a whole new world of riffs. The guitar work here is just so absolutely brilliant. And the, I mean, all the songs are also a blast and just, this is a fucking amazing, really unique, awesome album. Number 31 is Crossed Out's self-titled album, Crossed, Crossed Out. So this is power violence at some of, some of its very best. This is just sheer aggression, sheer brilliance. I absolutely love the songwriting here, the dynamics here. This is not just, like, if you listen and pay attention, you will hear the power violence. If you're, if you're a good power violence band, you're not just gonna play loud and fast as you can. You're gonna really think hard about every single note. Crossed Out does not waste a note. Every time they're playing loud and flat fast, it's like it, it has purpose. And it, you can just feel the misery and aggression and anger just flying off this album. And it's so brilliant and so heavy. It's like, if you're miserable, listen to this album. You're gonna be like, this is the fucking best album. It's fucking sick. Number 30 is Neurosis's Through Silver and Blood. Neurosis is one of the best metal bands ever. And Through Silver and Blood is, in my opinion, their best album. The, I mean, how do you fucking write an album like this? It's so massive. Post-metal. Just, like, brilliant genius fucking, like, the drumming in the first song is just like, what the fuck? It's, like, hypnotic, massive, angry, depressing, beautiful, just, like, a whole wider range of emotions while also being technically extremely impressive and very influential and very... You know, innovative. It's fucking. It's just one of the best metal band, metal, 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 best metal albums ever. Number twenty nine is a jazz classic. John Coltrane's "A Love Supreme." Every jazz fan has heard this album. If you haven't heard it yet, you go listen to it. It's fucking sick. It's one of the best jazz albums of all time, for a reason. John Coltrane is at the top of his fucking game here. His playing is absolutely stunning. John Coltrane is truly a master of melodies, and boy are the melodies in this album just jaw-dropping. It's like, what the fuck? What the fuck was that? What did I just hear? That was so sick. The improvisation is just so full of energy, and just she's just on fire. This entire album is just so full of emotion and passion. It's brilliant. It's so unique and brilliant and fantastic. It's really, it's just, it's just, it's really fucking good. It's just really fucking good, and so like. Interesting. It's just interesting. It just hits so many emotions in one jazz album. It's brilliant. <sighs> Moving on now. Number 28 is Amoebix's Arise. This is one of the best punk albums ever. Crust punk, really heavy, dark album. Gets, you know, lots of post-punk influence in there, too. Like, this album just covers themes of revolution, which you know I love, and mental illness, and just like, you can just feel like the misery and just like depression and angst, the system fucking you over hard, like literally teetering on the edge of just like suicide in this record. It's really dark, really heavy, but the songs are so unique. It's really unique, really impressive, really revolutionary, just a, just a stunning album. One of the best punk albums of all time. Go check it out, I highly recommend it. Number 27 is Black Sabbath's Paranoid. So Black Sabbath, of course, a classic band, Paranoid, a classic record. And I mean, it, it, it's, it's a classic for a reason, folks. This is, Black Sabbath were just so fucking ahead of the game in terms of innovating metal. Like this is just like some brilliant, brilliant, amazing metal just outstanding songwriting, outstanding guitar tones and jams going on here, all sorts of really fucking sick stuff. Doomy, gloomy, heavy, beautiful, fun. It's just like one of the few albums that is like extremely popular that I also feel like the quality of the album is also on par with how popular it is because it really is a stunning album, influential in all the best ways. I mean, come on. Thank God this album exists. Number six is Dystopia's Human Equals Garbage. This is a, a masterpiece. I've never heard a album so accurately depict capitalism and being a pawn of the system crushing you to fucking death. And then now you just are just sheer misery screaming on the top of your lungs, wanting out. Really dark, really heavy. 
pretty challenging EP, but just so brilliant. Sloppy, dark, heavy, but the artistic statement that is depicted in this EP is, is just brilliant. It's sloppy and, 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 and rougher on the edges because that's how it should be, okay? Fucking brilliant. I can barely even put into words how good this is. Really sludgy, sludgy, hardcore punk brilliance. It's amazing. We're in the top 25 now. Ah! Number 25 is PJ's Harvey's. Stories from the city, stories from the sea. PJ Harvey's entire discography is just stunning. She's released so many fucking awesome albums. This album though, honestly, is just to me, jaw dropping. The production is stunning. The songwriting is stunning. The vocals are absolutely stunning. It's such a beautiful, wonderful, awesome, album just i mean i if, if you haven't explored pj harvey's discography yet please do you're missing out like everything is so fucking sick i would recommend starting with this one but really you can't go wrong with because her whole discography from start to finish is just filled with brilliance and i feel like this is just where she really just kind of nailed an album from start to finish where the songwriting is just at the absolute top of the game brilliant beautiful stuff i absolutely like every time i put this album it's just like chills it's so good Number 24 is Red House Painters Down Colorful Hill. <sighs> Red House Painters, come on. They're, they're so fucking sick. This album is stunning. So just, it's, it's slow core at its most slow core. These songs just, just, just so, every note they play is just so hard hitting, so heavy, heavy. Beautiful, beautiful textures, beautiful, beautiful playing. This, this music is absolutely gorgeous. Combine that gorgeous music with the depressive, heavy vocals, with the really hard hitting, extremely heavy lyrics. It's just like, oh, it's just an album you'll never forget. It's absolutely brilliant. Number 23 is This Heat's Deceit. This Heat, fucking amazing experimental rock band. Just so brilliant. I've already reviewed this album. You can go look it up. So much, there's just the, the absolute, there's so many layers to this album in terms of like the the, the 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 complex rhythms and complex riffs they're using and they're just the strange kind of like thrown together production it's just so it's just so like rough around the edges but it also comes together like musically so brilliantly and so cohesively and then somehow it has really awesome melodies and all sorts of just strange it just feels like an album that's just like a bunch of recordings kind of thrown together and even though it sounds so like scrappy like that it's just musically on a whole nother level. Like musicianship in here on, on par with like the top best progressive rock bands. F fucking fantastic. Punk, it's punk too at the top. It's, it's punk, it's, it's punk. Speaking of punk, number 22 is Min Min Minuteman's Double Nickel on the Dime. If you haven't heard this album, you're so stupid. Minuteman is one of the best punk, album, punk bands of all time. This album is a fucking masterpiece. Really long album, tons of material here to dig through. It's just punk rockers playing this really unique, fun, into, like intellectual, artsy fartsy, political punk that's so, it's, it, it hits all sorts of emotions. It's like, it's like, it's like emotional. You kind of like fall in love with all the band members. It's only three, you know, it's only a trio and you can really just click with every single band member playing. The lyrics are so just like, just like raw, really raw emotions coming through here. Also very political. Just, it's just like, it's just brilliant. It's just like brilliant minds. It's just a, it's like, it's like a long album of a ton of songs of brilliant punk masterminds just showing off how fucking brilliant they are really. Number 21 is Gorgut's Obscura. This is a stunning, stunning album. It took me a long time to realize how brilliant this is, but what's really going on here is just like, just imagine a guitarist how do I fucking describe this album? This is such a hard album to describe. It just, it's like, you know, everything is just so fucking complicated. The riffs are so complicated. The drumming is so complicated. The vocals are so abrasive. It's just extreme. It's just, just one of the most extreme albums to ever exist. Compositions here are just extremely like, what the fuck? How the fuck did I write these songs? It almost sounds like they're improvising, but they're not really improvising. These are just riffs that are just so long and crazy and weird with drums that are just so long and crazy and weird. Some of the most impressive drumming I've ever heard. And it just, it's nonstop brilliance. It's like, it's amazing that something can be so abrasive and so brilliant at the same time. It's just like, the more you listen, the more you pick up. It's, it's, I, I, it's stunning. It's brilliant. It's amazing. I absolutely love this album. It's just, a total fucking masterpiece, extremely impressive on a technical level, and also on a 
just like how powerful it is when you listen to it. Number 20 is Nas's Illmatic. Okay, come on. This is like one of the best hip hop albums of all time. For real, folks. If you haven't listened to this, this is just absolutely stunning. I love the storytelling in this album. I love the production. DJ Premier, come on, one of the best producers of all time. This album's so fucking good. Every single fucking song is just like so addictive, so fun, awesome lyrics, awesome rapping. Like, it's just like the quintessential, like, perfect rap album. It's like, it's, it's a fucking perfect rap album. It's, it's, I mean, come on, you know this album. I don't need to tell you. This is such an influential, such an amazing, outstanding album. If you haven't listened to this, what are you doing? Go listen to this right now. Number 19 is the Stooges Funhouse. The Stooges, one of the best bands of all time, one of the first punk bands, one of the best punk bands. And how do I put this? This is just raw attitude, raw emotion, explosive. Just the Stooges just playing these like just hard hitting heavy, psyched, kind of psychedelic jams that are so groovy, but also rougher on the edges, punk, you know? And then there's freaking Iggy Pop on the mic going fucking nuts. Just, just, uh, just sheer, just, you just can, you, you can just visualize him just ripping his clothes off and jumping into the audience. It's just so fucking badass. This, the Stooges are so fucking badass. It's so sick, it's so sick. I love the Stooges, I love the Stooges. Number 18 is Charles Mingus's The Black Saint and the Sinner Lady. This is such a fucking, the, I mean, the, the compositions here are absolutely brilliant. The, 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 the arrangements of different instruments, all like having these different kind of, these different sounds and emotions coming through and these really complex compositions that really, it's almost like classical music how this album comes together. It's so, like it, 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 it's it's just like the way these songs build and repeat and explode. There's explosive moments here. It's just so just it's it gives you chills. The amount of musical brilliance shining through here. Charles Mingus, we all know, is a brilliant musician, but here he just is like just at his most ambitious, and it's just it's just so exciting to listen to. Number seventeen is Autiker's Confield, one of the best electronic albums of all time. Autiker. I mean, their whole discography is absolutely brilliant, but in my opinion, here is where they they really just kind of just kind of do something that's just absolutely jaw dropping. These songs are so complex, so strange, so eerie, but so brilliant. It just it just feels like it just feels like it's like they've unlocked something in this album that like is like a whole an, a whole another dimension of music that we didn't even know existed. And then they do this and it's just like, it feels, when you listen to it, it feels like you're melting. It's just so fucking brilliant, so complex. I fucking love Autiker. I love the fuck out of this album. It's brilliant. Number 16 is Moss Icons, Liburnum Wits and Liberation Fly. I hope I said that right. This is a stunning, stunning, extremely underrated punk album. So many cool things coming together. It's like kind of like combining post-hardcore with post-punk. So it's kind of like got like that dark, atmosphere of like joyous vision, but you got really fucking wonderful post-hardcore riffs coming together and these songs that just like are just so like the attitude here is just so brilliant. I can't I, I can't even explain it. It's just like it almost like it's almost like what the fuck is going on here? These lyrics are so strange and so captivating. Like I don't know what he's saying, but I just I get it. I feel it. It's just like really beautiful, wonderful poetry. And the vocal delivery is just like sometimes it just sounds like he doesn't care. And then sometimes he's just screaming into the mic. One of the best bands of all time. This is insane. It's just, and the the, the 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 song that's the same name as the album. I don't feel like saying the whole album title again. I don't even know what it, I, don't, I already forgot it. It's just so long. It's just like one of the best songs I've ever fucking heard. The the way the songs just kind of like are these punky extended song composition and then all of a sudden explodes into this like really beautiful melodic riff it's just like what the fuck it's fucking brilliance number 15 is swans soundtracks for the blind swans a absolutely stunning experimental rock band they've done it all from their industrial noisy shit to their more artsy farty more beautiful stuff and their loud crazy post rock stuff and they're gothic everything they're just everything everything swans swans <laughs> and here in Soundtracks for the Blind, their most ambitious project really just demonstrates all different angles of what is so brilliant about Swans and a massive, extremely ambitious, stunning, kind of scary, jaw-dropping album. Some of these songs are just eerie and strange and weird experiments. Some of these songs are so beautiful they're going to make you cry, okay? If, 
I mean, this is like, it's just a whole, it's just like on a whole nother level. This is a, a stunning, amazing, ambitious, incredible record. It just is jaw dropping. Number 14 is My Bloody Valentine's Loveless. This, come on, Loveless. It's fucking Loveless. Shoegaze brilliance it's it's so funny because there's there's been you know shoegaze never has never really died there's still plenty of shoegaze bands going around this album though like no band like no shoegaze band comes even close to touching this the the the, the it's just like you could just tell like so much time and energy went into making this album absolutely fucking perfect every guitar tone every riff it just hits you in such a in such a powerful way. It's such a, it's funny because this album is actually mastered really quietly. You have to turn the volume really up loud on your, on your, on your, you know, iPod to be able to hear the volume fully. But it's just so massive sounding. It's so massive. It's simultaneously massive, but also gentle and emotional. It's, it's, it's fucking My Bloody Valentine, folks. Number 13 is The Residence Not Available. Every person who wants to make experimental music, experimental rock, whatever you want to make, experimental music, needs to listen to this album. The Residents are just... What are they fucking doing in this album? It's hard to kind of even put into words. These songs are long. They have these kind of ideas that they'll kind of repeat throughout the song. It just feels like I'm watching a really, really bizarre avant-garde play kind of just unravel as I listen. And... Some of the, and even though it's so weird and strange and unique and jarring, the musical ideas here, every single musical idea here is just brilliant. It's just like, has so much personality, so much thought into it, the, the, the tones and just it's, it's just, it's just fascinating. It's just an album that's absolutely fascinating to listen to. You listen to it and it's just, you just, it's just, it just melts your brain because it's just so, it's just so, it's, it's it inspirationally weird and brilliant. Number 12 is Unwound's Leaves Turn Inside You. A massive album, punk, post-hardcore, brilliance. This is a double album, maybe triple album, I don't know. It's, it's, I'm just gonna say it's a double album. It's a long album of all sorts of ex kind of just experiments within the genre of post-hardcore. Again, kind of like how I said about their album, New Plastic Ideas kind of like feels like you're just kind of like exhausted walking like molasses. It kind of has that, but the production is like a little bit, a little bit cleaner, a little bit more, I feel like there's more layers and more textures going on in this album, but in also like a wider range, wide range of emotions. There's going to be some really awesome punk tracks, really cool kind of like indie rock tracks, some really awesome epic post rock tracks. Just kind of like, how do I put this? It's just jaw-droppingly fucking good, folks. It's just like, it's just a stunning album. It's just stunning. It's just fucking stunning. It's just amazing. And it's long and it's consistent. So you can keep, re re you know, re revisiting it and you're just gonna like love it more and more because you're like, oh my God, this song, I'm gonna... <laughs> and it's like, I didn't even listen to the song that much and I want to get to listen to it more because it's so good. Amazing. Unwound is one of my favorite bands. Like top, top five, probably top three favorite bands of all time, honestly, folks. Maybe even top two. Okay, moving on to the next um, next one. Number 11 is Faust's Faust. Am I pronouncing that right? I don't fucking know. It's German. 11. So, this album is kind of like an existential crisis unraveling before your eyes, okay? This, the, the kind of like the improvisation going on here, the strange, weird textures throughout, the strange song structures, just... Again, kind of similar to The Residence, it's just like fascinating to listen to, fascinating to watch unravel before your eyes. But I think Faust, even though like this album is equally, you know, The Residence's album is equally as fascinating, this one I feel like they kind of just tap into something that's like really emotional. Like there's moments in this album where it's like kind of sat satirical, but it's not like satirical in a funny way. It's kind of like satirical in a like, oh my God, nothing fucking matters. Everything is just, everything is bullshit. Like this album is just like shows you Everything is fucking bullshit. Nothing matters. We're all gonna die. Let's just make these weird fucking crazy strange so songs. It's, it's, it's really heavy. It's really heavy. It might sound like goofy random noises to you. It's not. This album is really fucking heavy. One of the best albums of all time. We are now in the top 10. Yeah. 
Oh, I hope you're enjoying the list so far. So number 10 is going to be Sonic Youth's Daydream Nation. Sonic Youth is my favorite band. I love their entire discography. Preference towards the earlier stuff compared to the later stuff, but I also really like their later stuff too. Anyways, enough about that. Daydream Nation is a shockingly brilliant rock album, okay? So full of energy, so full of intricate, brilliant guitar playing and just musicianship with this entire thing. So full of life. The noisy breakdowns, so fucking cool. Really just like what punk is all about. It's punk, it's punk, it's rock, it's punk, it's dope, it's brilliant. It's fun. It's everything. It's one of the best rock albums ever. I just, I, it's, it's, it's just, it just has this energy that's fucking unmatched. On top of this, the, the, the colossal, brilliant ways these songs are composed. And all the different cool, crazy, fun things going on here with the guitar work and everything. This album hits an emotion. That if you're a teenager, you know because it's punk. It's a teenage riot. Yeah. Okay, moving on now. Number nine is Captain Beefheart's Trout Mask Replica. This is a stunning, brilliant, amazing album. Kind of one of those albums that are just so shocking. The 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 amount of talent that every single musician here is exhibiting is just brilliant. Like the riffs here are just like. Remember how I said Meshuga like. When I'm, I can't really like play along to my sugar. I cannot fucking play along to this album at all. I don't stand a chance. Okay, it's just it's just it's just raw energy. Just it feels like sparks are coming off the instruments. It's just like it's just like so like, and it's 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 not. This album is just is is not just raw like crazy weirdness, just goofing around. These songs are really thought out. These songs are every single song in this album is really an artistic accomplishment fascinating to listen to, jaw-droppingly jaw good, inspired so many of your favorite experimental rock bands, including my band and my music, because this album fucking rocks! I love Cousin Big Heart! And this is over the Trout Mask Replica is so fucking cool! The production's really cool. I think it's produced by Frank Zappa, actually. Regardless, anyways, really fucking cool. Yeah. Let's move on to the next album. Number eight is Milton Nascimento's Clube da Esquina. This is a, a beautiful album. One of the best pop albums ever, if not the best pop album ever, okay? It's just so mm, exhilarating. It's like ecstasy listening to all these beautiful, wonderful instruments come together and the melodies are just so full of life, so full of love, so just, it's just, it's just so brilliant. It's so fucking brilliant. Brazil has a ton of outstanding music. Brazil, like, Brazil is one of the, in terms of musical output, Brazil is one of the best countries in terms of musical output. This album, out of all Brazilian music I've listened to, is the best, in my opinion. It's just stunningly good, kind of psychedelic, really chill, really beautiful, just beautiful, beautiful music, stunning. I love every single song on this album. Number seven is No Comments Downsided. This, in my opinion, is the best hardcore punk release of all time. This album is only seven minutes long, but I could talk about it for hours. Please listen to this fucking release. It's just, in these seven minutes, they compact so many fucking ideas. It's explosive. It's only seven minutes long, but it takes many listens for you to wrap your head around all the crazy, amazing, outstanding things going on here. And the 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 the, the, the musicianship is brilliant. You think it's you, you might think if you if you're not you know if, you, if your ear isn't trained to hardcore punk, you might just think it's just people playing as loud and fast as they can, just doing all sorts. Of, it's not. You try covering. I, I've covered some. I've co I've covered a song off this before. It was really hard. A really short song, like what, like thirty seconds or a minute long. It took a lot of fucking practice, because the musicianship is brilliant. Every single play, every single musician in this band is just is just stunning. So many cool ideas. The, the the rhythms changing and the just explosions and just the lyrics too. The lyrics are fucking outstanding. Like some of the best lyrics I've ever seen in an album. And you can barely even understand him because he's just screaming at his screaming to you. Must his the, the the vocal delivery is like 
And it's just like, you, you might hear that and just think, oh, this is just abrasive, noisy nonsense, but you just uncover it, you listen, and just really like, listen over and over again, you'll hear like, holy fuck. This is the best hardcore release of all time. Brilliant. Number six is Public Enemies. It takes a nation of millions to hold us back. This is my favorite hip hop release of all time. I think it's the best hip hop release of all time, okay? It is just radiating so much revolutionary energy, musically and politically revolutionary, okay? The production is like really noisy, really textured, kind of abrasive. Like it's, this is actually a pretty challenging album. Just like, it's just so explosive, but somehow on top of this explosive Production and the beats are just so, you know, wild and fun. Chuck D is just like... I love Chuck D. I fucking love Chuck D. I love the lyrics here. I love the vocal delivery. Just so, It's just so revolutionary. It's like, this is one of the most revolutionary albums I've ever heard. And that is, of course, gonna make it one of the best albums of all time, okay? If you're, if you're able to do something so revolutionary, just so political, just so, like, I just... I want to just like, I just love, I just love Public Enemy. I just want to, I want to like dive into this album. I wish I could go inside this album and just like be like, take my hand, Chuck D. We're gonna have a fucking, we're gonna have a fucking punk revolution now, okay? So it's, it, 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 the way it, ins it just inspires me so much. And not only does it inspire me so much, it's inspired all of hip hop a lot. It's one of the most inspirational hip hop albums of all time. It's fucking just, it's just, it's so fun but also so just like lots of like just brilliance coming through here it's just it's amazing it's amazing i love this album so much number five top five holy fuck hold on to your horses number five is lisa germano's geek the girl i think this is the most underrated album of all time because it's a masterpiece it is a stunning amazing indie rock noisy weird just like strange but really emotional rock album. Certainly inspired by like the Velvet Underground, kind of like that noisy experimental rock stuff. But it's like so like, it's like, it's kind of like noisy, but it's also like really, really beautiful. Like none, none of these songs are really abrasive, but I feel like emotionally they're kind of abrasive because the lyrics here, the vocal delivery here, it's just so like, like, it's just like Lisa Germano fucking gets it, okay? She sounds depressed here. She sounds just, just like, hates the fucking world around her for the way it has mistreated her. It is so heavy lyrically. It's just the the courage of Lisa Germana to like go on and release an album with this raw emotion coming through. It's very courageous, beautiful, amazing stuff. Really, I, I mean, both musically, the music here is just out, outstanding, like a whole whole nother universe and vocally and emotionally absolutely stunning really heavy beautiful amazing music and also kind of catchy too the melodies are pretty catchy i don't know folks kind of kind of brilliant number four is the velvet undergrounds the velvet underground and nico okay this album like one of the most inspirational albums of all time please go listen to it if you haven't already it's stunning it it pretty much Honestly, like every single fucking good album ever pretty much was inspired by this album, okay? Noisy, experimental, punk, but also beautiful and catchy and weird and strange and existential and edgy and just, it's like everything. It's like all the cool, it's like, it's the definition of cool. And I'm not putting it on here because it's a cool album. I'm putting it on here because it actually is just musically absolutely brilliant. Heroin, one of the best song rock songs of all time. The, the use of the the uh, violin and like, it's just like, it just, it just gives you chill. It just gives you chills. The lyrics are just so real, real lyrics. This is punk revolution. The lyrics in this album are punk revolution now. Real beauty, real, real. This is the, this album is the definition of fucking real. Like we're fucking real, okay? The guitar playing loud and noisy. It's so awesome. And there's also a lot of catchy fun stuff in it too. It's fun, but also edgy and real and it's everything. It's fucking everything. This album is... Come on. It's stunning. It's the Velvet Underground. It's the Velvet Underground. You know. You've listened. If you don't get it, re-listen. If you don't get it still, listen to more music that's been inspired by this and then go back to listen to this and be like, oh yeah, this is 
really fucking good and it's like it's like the reason good it's like the it's like the it's the reason good rock music fucking exists basically okay it's an exaggeration but for real maybe not number three is miles davis's in a silent way miles davis is one of my favorite musicians of all time of course duh i mean come on his discography is so fucking impressive he has so many really outstanding amazing albums um but i feel like miles davis is just like real brilliance shines the most in his jazz fusion stuff. I mean, everyone loves his, you know, like post bop, whatever, earlier stuff too, cool jazz, all that. Um, but this album, in a silent way, where he really dives in deep into his jazz fusion albums, his jazz fusion era, I guess you could say. It's just otherworldly. It's just, it just, you, the amount of emotions coming through here, just, it just, this album creates all sorts of emotions. Into, it's, it's, it's like a mysterious album, kind of like inspirational and optimistic in a sense, but also like kind of like melancholy. It's gorgeous. The, in, the, 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 it, it's gentle. Everything is real gentle. You know, it's a very gentle album, but the, the improvisation going on is just full of fire. Okay. It's, it's stunning. It's like, when, whenever I listen to it, I'm like, how is this musically possible? It's gorgeous. It's outstanding. It's brilliant. Super inspirational. Incredibly impactful, powerful, inspirational jazz album. Wonderful shit. Miles Davis, you're a fucking genius. I think, I think with this album, In a Silent Way, is where Miles Davis really just unlocked something that's like from a whole nother universe a whole nother world i know i've said that a lot this video i don't give a fuck you it's this is a lot of these albums are otherworldly and in a silent way it's from a fucking it's like an alien gave it brought it to us from a different planet number two is slint's spider land slint's spider land okay i've already reviewed it go check out the review if you want my full thoughts on it but i will just put it this way these are some punk rock kids who came together sat down brought some really strange riffs in with some really hypnotic drumming, came together and wrote these outstanding compositions, helping create an entire new genre of post-rock, discovering the brilliance of combining post-hardcore with post-rock, bringing the punk attitude at heart into a really intellectual, thought-provoking, emotional, introspective album that's explosive and just stunning. It's so brilliant. On a technical level, this is a perfect album. On an emotional level, this is a fucking perfect album. This is like, hmm, hmm. One of the most tech, this is like, I think this is one of the most technically impressive albums of all time. I mean, I, it's, it's number two on the list, so I guess you can say it's the most technical, technically impressive album of all time. It's it's just, da, go, just go watch my full review of it. I love the fuck out of this album. This album has changed my fucking life 10 times over. Go listen to it, it's so sick. And if you don't get it, re-listen to it because it's so fucking brilliant, it's amazing. Okay, now we're gonna move on to number one. How, how many people here, how many people here skipped to the end of this long ass video that I worked my fucking ass off. I worked my fucking ass off on this video and you skip it, you skip it to the end just so you can see number one. No, rewind and watch the whole thing. You're not allowed to watch. You're, allowed, you're, you're not allowed to know what number one is unless you watch this entire fucking video. Rewind, start over. If you skipped even a minute of it, you gotta start all over. That's the rules. So let's get the fucking show started. Let's begin moving on to number one. All right, let's fucking do this. I'm fucking exhausted. This has been a really challenging video to make. My brain is absolutely fried. It's gonna be a pain in the ass to edit, but we're gonna fucking do it. Ah! Okay, number one. Is number one going to be Died's new album, Less Life, that you haven't heard yet because it's not out? I was tempted to do that, I'm gonna be honest, but obviously I don't wanna damage the entire integrity of this video because I really strongly believe this list is quite good. Um, I mean, I've looked at a lot of other music critics' top 100 albums of all time list, and I... They're, some of them are pretty good, but I think mine really takes the cake as the best one. You can't. So what is it going to be number one? You thought it was going to be Slint, didn't you? But that was number two. So what could be better than Slint? Number one has to be... Number one is without a doubt. This was immediately my number one. It's been my number one for a, like almost a decade now. This is without a doubt the best album of all time. It's got to be number one, folks. You guessed it, fuckers. You guessed it. It's Neutral Milk Hotels and the Aeroplane. I was the same. 
Hey. What the fuck? This album is just like, what the fuck is this album? What the fuck is this album? This album is insane. This album is literally fucking insane, okay? Jeff Mango coming out here with these lyrics about falling in love with Anne Frank and singing his heart out. These lyrics make you want to fucking cry. This is such a beautiful album, okay? It touch this album touches on family, God, death, the Holocaust, all sort abuse, all sorts of really heavy themes. And it does it successfully. What? It does it really fucking well. Musically, this album is just a thrill to listen to. Really interesting arrangements with the what are, what, whatever the fucking weird instrument. They're using all sorts of weird instruments in this album. All sorts of cool energies and emotions. Some, 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 some songs are just guitar and vocals. Some songs are explosive, kind of punk songs. Wide range. Some are instrumental. Horns and all sorts of cool... Musically, it's just outstanding, but the lyrics are really what takes this album to the, to, uh, to some just that that makes this album untouchable. Makes this album something that's just like there's nothing that's gonna come close to this. Honestly, like I I will I this is this takes the cake. Okay, this album it's kind of avant garde. The way that Jeff Mangum just puts himself out there so intensely in the lyrics using really cryptic lyrics really poetic really emotional really heavy really heavy lyrics really just like like every single line is just packed with like if you listen closely and kind of like decipher it it's just like <laughs> what did he, did he just say that did he just say my father made fetuses with flesh-licking ladies while you and your mother were asleep in the trailer park casually in a six-minute song full of other lyrics that are equally as heavy and powerful and just jaw-dropping? It's like, dude, what the fuck did you... What the... Who says that? Who says your father made fetuses with flesh-licking ladies and you thought were asleep in the trailer park? And you think about what that means is your father's betraying you and you're betraying your family and it's amazing! It's like there's all sorts of... It's just packed. And it's just like so intimate. It's so fucking intimate. It's so intimate. It's just like every lyric is just like... I in your dreams, you're alive and you're crying as your mouth moves with mine soft and sweet. What? That's so beautiful. It's so heavy. It's so emotional. This is like, this is an album that's going to make you fucking cry when it clicks. It's just like, <laughs> this album is like, this album is like the meaning of life itself. This album is bigger than fucking life. And it's so funny because it's like, you know, I, I love technically impressive albums. This album technically has some pretty, you know, cool arrangements and like, but like in terms of like, you know, the chords, it's very simple chords, simple time signatures, you know, but it's just like raw emotion, raw emotion. This album taps into some very intimate, very private, very heavy emotions. And um, I, I can't think of any other album that really does that at this level. As honest, like the lyrics here are just so real, so honest, so <sighs> fucking. It's just, it just so like it just captures your imagination. These strange lyrics, the whole just different universe this album takes you to. It's the best album of all time. One of the best works of art of all time, in my opinion. <sighs> I just can't even tell you, man. If you if you get this album, you fucking get it. If you get this album. You get it. like this. There's a there's a there's a there's a decent amount of people who this album has literally just changed their whole li whole lives. I'm one of those people. I've listened to this album hundreds of times. It's just a fucking masterpiece. All right, folks, we did it. Let's have a little dance party to celebrate that we finished recording this video. Boom. boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Best albums of all time. I'm also gonna put this list on my website. Thank you to everyone who helped make me help make this list for me. I mean, no one made this list for me. No one even read this list, but you know, like my friends who've always been handing me over some really cool albums to check out and just just thank you to all my subscribers all all thousand of you, a thousand plus now. Oh, we're growing really fast, aren't we now? And we just made this really long video and you you watched the whole thing, didn't you?
Thank you. Like and subscribe and comment down below. If you watch this whole video, if you watch this whole video from start to finish, please leave a comment, message me, because that's fucking amazing. Um, I'm fucking exhausted. I'm sure the last few reviews I was getting kind of sloppy with my thoughts because I'm fucking exhausted. This video took forever to fucking record and make. I had to wait more for it. It took, it took forever. Thank you for watching. I'm going to put this list on my website because you can always look at, look at it there. Um, thank you so much. Punk Revolution. Punk Revolution!